John Hughes High School happens to be a typical high school, full of hormonal teenagers and different cliques. One of the teachers welcomes in new students to the school, saying the place is completely non-discriminatory and doesn't have different groups. He goes on to add that there are no bullies around either but he soon proves himself wrong, by grouping the new students into certain cliques himself. He tells them that they can only make friends with people like themselves and then sends them away. Janie, on the other hand, tries to save herself by pretending to read a book, as her dad drives her to school. Her brother asks her to start dating but Janie is adamant about not conforming to high school norms and being a bookish outcast nerd. Right as they reach school, her dad runs over a cheerleader performing her dance act but that's the least of their problems. They have a very typical conversation like in every other rom-com, and finally, Janie and her brother go to school. That's when the mega-rich, popular jock of the school comes in. Each and every girl swoons over his charismatic beauty. His name is Jane Wyler and is dating the most popular girl in school, Priscilla. All the girls gather around him as he looks at the pictures of himself hanging all over the school walls. Janie is standing at her locker when her best friend, Ricky drops in and they start chatting. He's in love with her but she always ignores him. He hands her a mixtape as a sign of his love for her, but she just throws it into the stash of countless mixtapes he'd given her before. The high school is filled with all kinds of groups and cliques. Janie's brother, Mitch, roams around the school trying to court a girl, so that he can finally lose his purity. That's when he sees Amanda, the perfect girl for him. He's adamant about getting her. Jake is a nice guy who cares for everyone but his rival, Austin, happens to be a cruel jerk, which is why they're always getting in fights. Right then, Jake's sister, whose name is Catherine, walks in even though she's already graduated, Priscilla walks in. She's the hottest and most wanted girl in their school. Jake smiles at Priscilla but she just tells him that they need to talk. She dumps him saying he was just a fling and he's devastated. Janie is at her art class painting a masterpiece, which is slowly revealed to be nothing more than a stick figure. This is a reference to Teen Move is always making the female character creative, artsy, and just not like the other girls. She's called into the principal's office where a foreign exchange student has been brought in. Janie walks into the principal's office to see the foreign exchange student, Ariola, completely without clothes. The principal asks Janie to give Ariola a tour of the school and she agrees. The two of them walk out for the tour, while Jake and Austin fuss over Priscilla leaving him. Jake broods over Priscilla making out with her new boyfriend and tells his friends that she's all makeup and short clothes. He adds that she's totally replaceable and any girl can look like her if given the right makeover. That's when Austin makes a bet with Jake. He has to make any girl Austin chooses as the prom queen, to which Jake readily agrees. They start looking around for the most hopeless girl at school. They look at the ugliest and most disfigured girls at school, but pass thinking they're too easy. They overlook hunchbacks, hippies, and conjoined twins but end up choosing Janie Briggs, as she has glasses and a ponytail with which apparently, any girl becomes the ultimate loser and messed up. Jake scoffs and begs Austin to choose someone else because there's no way Janie could be prom queen. Malik, Jake's token dark-skinned friend, who only says cliché dialogues and wishes him all the best for this journey would surely be a nightmare. At the gym, Mitch is still swooning and trying to win over Amanda. He and his friends look at all the girls in the changing room and decide to sneak in there for fun. In class, Janie and Ricky sit next to each other. The teacher calls Ricky to read out the poem he has written for English class and he happily agrees. He walks up to the front of the class and reads his poem with the title 10 Things I Love About Janie. He expresses his undying love for her and Janie realizes this, as she hears him talk about all the little things she does. But even after all this, Janie turns a blind eye to him. On the other hand, Mitch and his friends finally end up in the girls' changing room. There they see a girl about to pee and decide to watch which soon turns out to be a big mistake. The girl pees and then starts to take a huge shit in the toilet, which instantly turns them off and they start gagging. She gets explosive diarrhea and the boys try to crawl away, but the vent is already too loose at this point. As Janie's teacher teaches her class about Oscar Wilde and literary excellence, the vent gives away and the boys fall down. They fall on top of the girl and the floor breaks which directly opens into Janie's class. This causes all the excrement to pour over the teacher, and the boys in the class breaks into chaos. At lunch, Jake walks up to Janie and asks if she wants to be popular which really perplexes her. She says no but then Jake asks her out, so that they can be seen in public together and he gets to win his bet. She straight up declines and walks away. At cheerleading auditions, Priscilla and her minions await the next contestant who happens to be a really unassuming, simple girl. This leads the girls to make fun of her as she starts to dance. But soon their opinions change when she starts cursing ruthlessly due to her Tourette's. Priscilla likes the way she screams out all types of obscenities and instantly selects her. At football, everyone except Jake is playing. Jake is sitting in the bleachers thinking about the time he led his team. In the flashback, Jake gives his team a very motivating speech when they're clearly losing, and decides to go against the coach's wishes. Jake thinks his plan will work but it ends in a gruesome accident instead. This ultimately leads to Jake getting kicked off the team. When he asks to be back, the coach just insults him and breaks his back instead. 
When Jake returns home, he sees his father hanging up a Princeton poster. He tells his father that he has no intention of going there, but his father insists and says he has to become an attorney since they're really rich. His father tells him he's really sorry about Priscilla and tells Jake that he's got a rebound girl for him. This instantly lightens him up but the girl turns out to be none other than Jake's mom. He gets grossed out and just goes to sleep, so that he can escape his incestuous family. Janie, on the other hand, falls asleep while watching another romance movie. She's really poor unlike Jake but still tries to find happiness in her life. Her father asks her what's wrong, and that's when she confesses about Jake asking her out. Her father is still drunk and assumes that Jake has knocked her up. But Janie tells him that's not true. Her father still urges her to go out with him even if he's only using her so that she can get popular. Then people would stop bullying her and her brother. At home, Jake walks into Catherine's room to ask her for advice on how he can make Janie popular and likable. Catherine tells him that it'll be difficult but she can do it. But for that Jake has to pay a price. Jake is grossed out by his family and throws her off of him. But he realizes that he still needs her help. He agrees to do what she wants and then Catherine tells him that there are three steps to getting Janie to be popular. First, he has to win her trust which he does by beating up the guys that mistreat Mitch. But when Mitch attacks Jake accidentally, Jake himself knocks him out. But still, this somehow makes Janie like Jake even more. Then, Jake has to make her feel special by singing a song with her name in it. While Janie is out painting, Jake sings a song to her publicly. But instead of choosing a popular song, he starts singing Janie has a gun. Everyone around her runs away screaming. Police arrive at the scene moments later and Janie tries to run away, but they catch up to her soon. They tase her and Jake notices this, but he just freaks out and runs away. Somehow, Janie gets more and more mesmerized by these acts. For the third step, which happens to be the icing on the cake, Jake has to seduce her and make her feel wanted. He brings Janie to his house but she's still not sure about him. She tries to leave but he doesn't let her and even offers to make a snack for her. Janie looks around Jake's massive house and sees all the sweet memories and accomplishments of his. This makes Janie think that maybe he's not as bad as she thought. Just then, Jake comes back with nothing but cream and cherries covering his privates. He's supposed to be the snack but Janie just exclaims that she doesn't like Sundays. She walks out and Jake is filled with disappointment. He goes back to his room with a banana and cream stuck on his Jake goes to Janie's house the next morning. When she asks him what he's doing, he tells her that he wants to take her to his friend Preston's massive party. Janie strictly declines it saying she doesn't even have a dress, but Jake doesn't take no for an answer. Catherine walks in with him carrying makeup, dresses, and everything she needs to make Janie look super hot. She looks at Janie from top to bottom and decides exactly what she has to do. Then Catherine does the unexpected. She removes Janie's glasses and ponytail. And by this change, Janie looks gorgeous. Her brunette hair flows down her shoulders. After a short while, Catherine presents Janie to her family and Jake. Everyone is stunned to see her. She looks completely unrecognizable and Jake falls for her at that very instant. Mitch is too stunned to speak. As Janie's about to walk further down the stairs, her foot gets stuck on the stairs. She tries to pull it off but the stairs completely demolish and she falls down with all sorts of furniture falling on top of her. Jake helps her out and they go to the party. Mitch and his friends go to the party as well. He tells his friends that he plans to have romantic moments with Amanda that night, and he'll accomplish that by giving her a heartfelt love letter. Everyone there is shocked to see Janie's makeover. Priscilla gets incredibly bothered to see that Janie is now popular and also dating Jake. Catherine goes to hook up with a random guy, while Jake introduces Janie to everyone at the party. Amanda enters the party and everyone is mesmerized. Everyone gets high and drunk at the party but Janie gets lost. Catherine starts to give her classmate, who's really old, some experience when it comes to kissing and romantic moments. But one thing leads to another, and they completely hook up. Janie ends up really drunk and starts causing a scene. She stands on the balcony and jumps into the pool. Jake asks her if she's okay while Priscilla blows up on her. She completely insults Janie and pours water into her already wet clothes. Janie feels really bad and runs away crying. Everyone at the party feels really bad as she runs home. There, she starts painting as a stress relief method, but Jake comes in to console her. He looks at the painting she makes which is supposed to be a portrait of her mother. It is nothing more than a stick figure, but he still tries to cheer her up by telling her that she has her mother's eyes. Janie's eyes well up with tears as she talks about her mother who died when she was only six. She tells him about the Christmas of 1989. That was when her mother died of cancer. Jake's consoles her by saying that she needs to let go of her past and excel in her talent of making stick figures. Janie replies that she wants to go to Paris but can't afford the $26,000 for admissions. She adds that all she wants is for a guy to come and take her away from all this. Jake tells her that he wants to be that guy and leans in for a kiss. The two get closer and closer but everything gets awkward and they decide to stop. Jake heads off home and Janie watches him go. The next day, the names of the nominees for prom king and queen get announced at school. Priscilla tries to scare Janie into backing out of the prom queen competition. At the cafeteria, Austin teases Jake saying he probably is in love with her already, but Jake denies it saying it's just a bet, and walks out. 
By this point, Janie has completely fallen for Jake. She reads books on how to get him, while Ricky at her side tries to woo her. That's when Jake comes in and asks her to the prom. She happily and excitedly says yes. Ricky tries to talk to Janie and ask her out but it's already too late. Janie is already daydreaming about getting treated like a princess. At a football match, everyone plays rebelliously but Jake is sitting in the bleachers, waiting for his turn. He is pretty upset because he knows he'll probably not get to play. The scenes change when Priscilla gets in a fight with another team's cheerleading captain. This causes a dance battle between the two teams, which merely turns out to be a really seductive stolen dance. The break starts and Jake and his team freshen up. While doing so, one of his friends whose name is Reggie Ray seems to be bleeding due to a severe concussion. Even then, he tries to go back on the field but isn't so good. The break ends and everyone gets exhilarated. Reggie Ray doesn't have any sense as to what's going around. He gets knocked out once again and Jake tries to play for him but the coach stops him. The situation gets really tense as Reggie Ray goes into a coma. After all this, the coach is still adamant about getting Reggie to play, so they tie Reggie to themselves until the game. Jake is still hopeful to be in the game. Jake's team starts to fail miserably and chaos ensues. Reggie Ray passes out soon. This gives Jake a chance to go back out in the field. The coach wishes him all the best, but Jake is still scared of what happened the last time he played. Everyone cheers him on but Jake ends up getting cold feet. The wise janitor sits beside him and helps him get his confidence back. But instead, he just makes Jake more scared of his actions and consequences. Jake decides that it's now or never and runs into the field. The match starts and Jake dodges everyone while playing. Things start looking on the brighter side. Malik asks to pass it to him but a massive brawl begins. Jake throws the ball and it flies into the sky straight to Reggie Ray's face. This causes Reggie to suffer another concussion, while Jake starts cursing himself out for every bad thing that happens. The crowd boos him and their team ultimately loses. Jake feels incredibly upset and out of place. Just then, Janie comes and tries to cheer him up, but he doesn't want to listen to her. He tells Janie that he's let everyone down, but Janie tells him how he's helped her become the woman she is. She thanks him for his help and this makes Jake feel better. But Austin comes in between them and claims that it's payback time. Jake tries to stop him but Austin blurts it all out to Janie. She's shocked and devastated to know that this was all a bet when she had really fallen for Jake. Jake tries to convince Janie that he really loves her and he was just blind to her before. She runs away crying and heartbroken. The next morning, Jake goes to a nearby park and sways in the swing, thinking of ways to win her back. He's upset and lonely. Both of them miss each other a lot but can't express it. They think meeting at the prom that day could resolve the fight. Everyone starts getting ready for the big night. Some of them have plans to lose their purity while the others want to look hot and stand out. Jake is adamant about getting Janie back and confessing his love for her. But Janie is too hurt by him and instead goes to prom with Austin. The prom begins and everyone is bored. There's some awkward tension in the air between Jake and Janie. Austin continues to bore everyone with his anecdotes, while Mitch tries to find ways to get into Amanda's pants. He is sure that he's going to have romantic moments today. Amanda walks in and everyone starts fawning over her. Mitch finally gets the courage and walks up to her. He thinks it's time to confess his undying love for her. He hands Amanda the love letter and she reads it. She gets offended thinking Mitch only handed the letter to her, so that he can have romantic moments. But she decides to get cheeky anyway and pulls him away from the crowd. Janie and Austin go dancing whilst Jake looks at them with jealousy and sadness. He decides to make her jealous by taking Catherine to dance with him. The two pairs get into an intense dance battle. Catherine starts touching him everywhere which angers Janie to the core. She kisses him too and Janie gets shattered. She leaves Austin and runs out of the venue. Jake tries to run after her but Catherine stops him saying, if Janie wins prom queen then he has to sleep with her. Jake is grossed out and ignores her. The announcement of the prom king and queen starts. As expected, Jake wins the title of prom king, and everyone cheers for him. He walks to the stage while the principal starts to announce the prom queen. Priscilla is certain that she's going to win and starts walking toward the stage. But that's when the principal says it's a tie between two people. Turns out, the prom queens are two conjoined twins. Everyone congratulates them and Jake starts to dance with them. He then sees Janie walk out with Austin and runs after her while shouting her name. At the door, he sees Malik and asks him if he'd seen Janie. Malik tells him that Austin has a room booked in a hotel so that's probably where they're headed. Jake thanks Malik and heads towards the hotel when he's stopped by Ricky. The two of them start debating on who loves Janie more, and ultimately end up dashing towards the hotel together. Jake and Rick run across the road and into the motel. Jake finally ends up in the hotel room, only to find Austin and Priscilla finding video together. Austin tells Jake that Janie actually ran home halfway through and makes fun of Jake. Jake ends up punching all of them and walking out. He runs to her house and asks her father where she is. Janie's father tells him that she's actually headed towards the airport to go to Paris, since she was done with everyone and everything. Jake finally reaches the airport and searches for Janie. He looks for her everywhere but can't seem to find her. Ricky ends up at the airport as well but all battered up after a severe accident. 
Jake finally ends up finding her and shouts for her but she can't hear him. Desperate to get her attention, he throws a ball at her and it hits her right in the face. He runs up to her and expresses all his feelings for her. He tells her that he really loves her. The security personnel at the side tells Janie that he's been quoting movie dialogues this whole time, and asks him to tell Janie what he actually feels. And that's exactly what he does. He tells Janie that she should board the plane and go to Paris, since it's very likely that he's gonna cheat on her sooner or later. Janie realizes that he's telling the truth but since she wears glasses, she's really adept at not seeing such massive red flags. She agrees to love him and date him nonetheless. The two of them kiss and everyone cheers them on. 